This week on Beacon Web News, we speak with President James Burge and MCLA students about the recent news regarding DACA. Then we check out MCLA's first open house of the semester, and we visit Gallery 51 to meet poet Lillian Yvonne Bertram. That's coming up next on Beacon Web News. Hello and welcome to the October 18th episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Samantha Niskern. Emmy Award-winning news reporter and journalist Byron Pitts will be coming to campus today as this year's Hardman Lecturer. At 7 p.m. in the Church Street Center, you can join Pitts for his presentation on mass media and democratic governance, the American experience. Just several weeks ago, the Trump administration said it was ending an Obama-era program, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Policy. BWN's Karen Canella talked with MCLA students and President Burge about the matter. Karen? Thanks, Sam. The Trump administration has ended the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Some of our students who are affected directly have spoken to us about this matter. Beacon Web News had the chance to meet with some of our immigrant students who share their story and concerns about the president's action in taking DACA away. President Birch also spoke to us about how the college will make sure to keep students safe and secure. Oscar Castro, a senior in the school, told us some of the challenges he faced when he arrived to the country. Not being able to speak English at first was really tough in the classroom. Castro also spoke to us about other students teasing him because of his accent. When I first started, maybe like people like making fun of me because of my accent. It's really heavy. And Castro shares some of his goals as an immigrant student and his reasoning for why he thinks getting his education is important. As an immigrant student, we come to this country for like a better future, you know, to, you know, to be better than, you know, what our families were able to do back in our country and just get an education and be a professional. Castro also mentioned that the college should offer more resources to help immigrant students feel safe on campus. I think that the school definitely has to, you know, back these students, show support, and let them know that they're here every step of the way. President James Burge told Beacon Web News some of MCLA's intentions regarding the Trump administration removing DACA. What we intend to do specifically is to protect students who might be currently protected under the DACA uh, policy to say that we will continue to honor that, we'll continue to honor their presence here on campus. The president also told us that the college would not cooperate with federal agencies that put immigrant students at risk of being deported. We will not cooperate with uh, any federal agency's efforts to remove students uh, or to identify them. President Verge shares some of the efforts that MCLA has made to fight against the Trump administration removing DACA. We've also signed on to um, the lawsuit that Attorney General Maura Healey has filed against the Trump administration on this. And in fact, our letter has become part of her documentation to, to um, demonstrate the urgency of preserving that right. The president also encourages immigrant students to reach out to him if they do not feel safe on campus. If there are students who are feeling like, uh, particularly those students who are uh, from other countries, that they're not safe or not welcome, I hope they'll come to me. Um, there are many people on campus to help them, but certainly they could come to me and we'd find the kind of support that they need. Mohammed Ayman, a sophomore on campus, told us why he thinks DACA is important. It's important because it's been helping me stay here all this time. And I've been able to go to school, and I've been able to work a few jobs that accept me. Ayman also told us some of the things he is limited from as an immigrant student. For me, I, have, I basically get no financial aid, so I have to pay almost everything out of pocket for this school. Ayman shares some of the issues he faces as an immigrant. Over the summer, I lost um, my work permit. I expired. So from there, I wasn't able to get a job. I was forced to just go work under the table. It was, it was really hard for me. He also spoke to us about some of the disadvantages that he faces. Working under the table, they, they took a lot of advantage because they knew I couldn't do nothing. So I used to get my, my pays cut. Ayman also told Beacon Web News of some of his biggest fears. My biggest fear as an immigrant student is getting deported and losing my, my um, chance of getting my education here. He also expressed to us what his intentions are in the country. I'm not trying to take anybody else's job. I just want a better opportunity for myself. And the end of DACA has brought many tensions and fears to many of our students, but MCLA will be giving all of their support. For Beacon Web News, I'm Karen Canella.
Thanks, Karen. We hope MCLA will stand up for its students. The Identity and Gender Equality Resource Center is hosting Spirit Day from Thursday, October 19th through Friday, October 20th in the Campus Center Marketplace. Wear purple to show your support of the LGBTQIA community and take a stand against bullying. If you are interested in learning more about health and wellness, MCLA's degree completion is hosting a wellness fair in the Campus Center Marketplace on Thursday, October 19th at 5.30 p.m. Feel free to stop by to learn more about a variety of wellness-related topics. Also this Thursday, the Multicultural Resource Center is hosting a viewing of Get Out at 7 p.m. in the Sullivan Lounge. Following the viewing, there will be a post-movie discussion with campus conversations on race. Last weekend, MCLA held their first open house of the semester. The event was a chance for future freshmen to check out the campus and see what our school has to offer. BWN's Karina Matera has more. Karina? Thanks, Sam. Hi, I'm Karina Matera from Beacon Web News, here on campus to take a look at the first open house of the year. This open house was put together for incoming freshmen and transfers and their families to take a look at MCLA and get a feel for the environment. They were able to learn about programs such as LEAD Academy, Honors, Study Abroad, the Athletic Department, and many more. Then they visited tables in the Campus Center gym to see a variety of clubs the school has to offer before going onto the campus tours. Megan McMahon lets us in on what the admission staff's goals were for the day. Um, we're hoping that they really get a full, well-rounded experience, so not only be able to tour the campus, but to also um, talk with professors, talk with current students, because we can tell them about our experiences, which are really valuable, but also the student experience is really important, and talk with professors and other faculty and staff on our campus. Tours brought the students and their families all throughout campus for this student-professor interaction. They went through buildings, classrooms, the CAF, and even the dorms. I caught up with students from Springfield's High School of Commerce afterwards to see if they thought MCLA would be a good fit for them. Um, I do feel it would be a good fit for me because I don't like big environments. I like to have connections with everybody that I'm around. So, yeah, I feel that that's good for me. The campus has many aspects that may stick out to visitors, but there was a main one in particular that the staff had in mind and students noticed. I think that MCLA offers not only the liberal arts aspect of an education, but also the small class sizes are super important. It's what we're known for and something that we do really well. Um, on top of the commitment of our faculty and staff, they really are committed to working with our students and developing relationships beyond the classroom. My first impression of the campus would be that it has a nice size of like students and teachers and stuff. The students and professors who were involved in putting the day together helped make the day a success. Also, the admission staff hard work paid off after all of the traveling to different high schools around New England and other parts of the country at college fairs to gain interest in MCLA. I think it was great. We're really excited. Um, I, we had a little over 90 students um, that actually came and with their families. We're really excited about that um, and, and ready to build a new class. Hopefully, we'll see many of the new faces we saw today here next fall. I'm Karina Matera from Beacon Web News. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Karina. Also this past weekend was the fine and performing arts production of Passing Strange. But if you missed it, don't worry. You'll have another chance to catch it this coming weekend. On Friday, October 20th and Saturday, October 21st at 8 p.m. and Sunday, October 22nd at 2, you can come by Venable Theater to catch one of the last few shows. Tickets are only $5, but get them quick, though, as seats are limited. This weekend is also Family Weekend, and if you are looking for something to do with your family, you can bring them to the Student Activities Council's Fall Craft Night. The event takes place this Saturday, the 21st, at 8 p.m. in the Sullivan Lounge. SAC is also hosting a carnival celebration with activities and food provided by the Student Government Association earlier that day from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. in Venable Gym. We are now approaching the halfway mark of the semester, which only means one thing, the dreaded midterms. BWN's Matt Mears talked to some students to see how they prepare for the exams. Um, well, for me, what helps is basically just separating the subjects and kind of focusing um, one day on one subject and then the next day I'll do a couple hours and um, just trying to make it so it's not like I'm trying to cram everything into one and um, just kind of just stay calm and I eat of course, and um, you know, just kind of separate the time, go to the library, take a break, go back, um, and yeah, so I don't feel overwhelmed. So I make sure that I like 
do a lot of studying. I take a lot of breaks during my studies um, just so I don't get overwhelmed. But I make sure that I read all the material and make sure I feel ready before the exam. I make sure that I go to my professor's office hours and my handy dandy laptop gives me all the information. It's very stressful, but um, you really have to just keep, keep going. That's the best thing you can do. Um, it's going to be stressful. It's going to be very, you're going to be tired, but the best thing you can do is just keep persevering. MCLA announced another alternative spring break trip, this one to Haiti. This service trip will allow students to become immersed in rural Haitian culture and help out in the community. The deadline to sign up is November 1st. If you are interested, contact Spencer Moser via Office 365. Feel like getting spooked? The Student Activities Council is hosting a trip to 13 nights at Jiminy Peak Mountain Resort. Sign-ups begin Tuesday, October 24th at 2 p.m. in Campus Center, room 312. Spots are limited, so if you're interested in going, then make sure to sign up soon. But if haunted houses aren't your thing, a haunted harvest festival will be held by the Roots Teen Center in downtown North Adams on October 27th. There will be activities held in various storefronts on Eagle Street and in the general downtown area of North Adams. Most activities will cost between $1 and $5, and there will be an all-ages costume contest. All of the proceeds will go to the Roots Teen Center. Last week, Gallery 51 was home to a poetry reading featuring the star guest Lillian Yvonne Bertram. BWN's Julia Texera attended the reading and had a chance to speak with Bertram. Julia? Thanks, Sam. I'm here at Gallery 51 as part of the Great Comma Poetry Reading Series. Let's check it out. This past Saturday, MCLA hosted a poetry reading at Gallery 51 as part of the Great Comma series. Before the event started, guests spent time mingling and eating light refreshments. Professor Finch then kicked things off by welcoming community members and students and introducing the special guest poet, Lillian Yvonne Bertram. Bertram read several poems of various kinds. When asked about how she went about choosing the poems that she read, she talked about how she went with the flow of the audience what I felt like I guess and also with with um, poetry tarot what the audience feels like I let them choose so I guess like a lot of my poems are, are kind of bleak not bleak but I don't want to say bleak so I feel like I don't know complicated we're in complicated times so something that hopefully resonates with that when asked about the theme for tonight, Professor Zachary Finch talked about bringing awareness to the literary art community in the Berkshires. The purpose of tonight was to generate uh, energy around the literary arts community uh, in the nor northern Berkshires, in North Adams, and on campus. So uh, yeah, just to uh, create a forum uh, where people can come hear a published uh, writer read her work aloud, and then also um, have a chance to try out like the act of reading and hearing what your own work sounds like in front of a group of people uh, for students or you know other people who haven't done that before. Um, so really just to sort of like um, create community around the spoken word. Lynch especially noted the difference of holding the event at Gallery 51 in downtown North Adams versus holding the event at MCLA. So we want to um, sort of contribute to the revitalization of, of downtown North Adams and Sometimes it seems like maybe students don't have enough of an excuse or an occasion to go downtown. So we want to, um, especially when the weather is still not totally uh, snowy, uh, you know, create events that are happening on Main Street so that, um, I don't know, so that there, you know, we can get uh, people off campus. And also one of the points of the, this series, the Great Comma series, is that we want to sort of mesh campus literary culture with the regional literary culture in North Adams and in the, in the county. So instead of having it at, on MCLA's main campus, it seemed nice to sort of have it in a space that was both sort of town and uh, campus at the same time. As you can see, the poetry reading was a success. Many people showed up, and the community has definitely been brought closer together. And for Beacon Web News, I'm Julia Texera. Thanks, Julia. Now let's go to Matt Mears for your local seven-day forecast. Matt? Thanks, Sam. 
Today will be sunny with a high of 67 degrees and a low of 42, which will kick off a warm stretch for the next few days. Tomorrow's high will be 71 degrees with a low of 44, along with a few clouds. The weekend is looking hopeful with mostly sunny skies and temperatures of around 70 degrees during the day. So go outside and make the most of this unusual fall weather. As we move toward next week, expect cloudier skies and some possible rain on Monday and Tuesday, while the temperature will stay warm at around 70 degrees. With your Beacon Web News 7-day forecast, I'm Matt Mears. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Matt. Do you love trivia? Serenity Cafe and Bar holds weekly 18 plus trivia nights on Fridays. Team signups are at 8 p.m. and the game starts at 9. While you're there, you can grab a bite to eat and have a drink. And on Friday the 27th, trivia night will be Halloween themed. That is it for this week. To stay updated with BWN, you can follow us on social media. As always, thank you for watching and we will see you next week.